welcome back. back. We are in module two, and this is a big one. Yes, so yes. we're starting with a lot of these basics. We're going back in history. We're going to talk about Edison and Tesla and the current wars and Maxwell's equations, all kinds of really exciting stuff. So it's going to be jam-packed with yep. things that you might have already known and a lot of stuff you probably didn't know. So enjoy. Let's go ahead and begin. <laughs> All right. So covered in this module, uh, we're calling it Early Inventions and Scandals. scandals. Yeah. Yes. So we're going to go over some inventors. Yep. Michael Faraday. Michael Faraday. And he also has the Faraday homopolar Polar generator, generator, which is important. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll talk about that. And like, like I said, Thomas Edison, Nikola Tesla, and the current wars. Yeah. And then we're going to talk about... Yeah, the, yeah, the Edison spirit phone. Edison spirit phone where he would he, he created a device to talk <laughs> to the dead. Yeah, that was or, a new one for me. Right? That <laughs> was that, and that's interesting. And also about how Tesla thought that he spoke to aliens. So... Aliens. Aliens. <laughs> <laughs> right? yeah. um, and what yeah. else? What else will we be covering? Covering uh, James Clerk Maxwell. Um, and again, he's the uh, Scottish mathematician and the basically the one who created the Maxwell equations of both asymmetrical and symmetrical systems. Not yep. not just the half of them that's used today in schools, but both sides of the equation. And what? Yeah, you're gonna know what those are, and those are really important to know the difference. Um, and also, we're gonna talk about how his theories were redacted. That's right. And that was a big scandal. Yes. What else? And because you have that split, we're going to talk about the difference of, between the laws of physics and the laws of nature. As they're known today. As they're known today. Yeah. Um, and the laws of nature as it pertains to the flight of the bumblebee. The aerodynamic law-breaking <laughs> flight, flight of, of the, the bumblebee. bumblebee. <laughs> and that includes something called zero-point energy. So we're going to define that as well at the end yes. of this module. Yes. So let's go ahead and move through some of these inventors. Okay. Michael Faraday. He was born in 1791 and he died in uh, 1867. He was an English chemist and physicist who studied the magnetic field around a conductor carrying a DC electric current and established the basis for the magnetic field concept in physics. He discovered electromagnetic induction, diamagnetism, and laws of electrolysis. In his scientific studies, Faraday was consciously seeking to understand the beauty, symmetry, and organization of creation. His inventions of electromagnetic rotary devices formed the foundation of electric motor technology and it was largely due to his efforts that electricity became practical for use in technology. Yeah, it's amazing. <clears throat> you want to tell us, because I know that F Faraday is mm -hmm. important to you yes. as an engineer. Mm -hmm. um, just a couple words about... Well, I mean, just in general, when I think of influence. Faraday, I think of uh, this is where it all started, basically. If anything that anyone's working on today, <laughs> motors, generators, um, electrolysis, <laughs> it's, all, it's all from this man. If, to, if you want to know how far back this technology goes, go back to the very beginning and look at uh, Faraday's research because some of it is still um, in debate today, particularly with the homopolar polar, uh, uh, motor that we'll uh, talk about later. Yeah, actually, that's, that's coming up next. Yeah. Okay, so there you go. Faraday created lots of different motors yes. and inventions and all different kinds of things, but this one in particular was very uh, significant, yes. especially when it comes to this free energy concept. Mm -hmm. And what happened was he invented this motor, yes, and then it kind of got shelved, right? Yes. It got shelved, and nobody ever touched it until, was it Tesla? Um, who first started working with these concepts? Tesla was working with the similar concepts as well. Right? Yes. So, so he invented it, it worked, mm -hmm. and then... A lot of the um, the free energy devices come from this concept. Yes. So let's talk about this particular motor. It's called the homopolar motor. Yes, that's right. Uh, so um, Michael Faraday did an experiment on December 26, uh, 1831, where he co-rotated a magnet in a copper disc, and he measured the current output. This is a very simple experiment as far mm -hmm. as the parts needed to replicate it. Okay, you just you have a, a disc that's a magnet, and then you have a, two discs that are copper and they're fitted together 
and you have some sliding contacts on the outside. But the experiment is that you you spun the whole thing together. Um, so they're all moving relative to each other at the same speed. Um, and he still detected current. And we have an actual picture of it here, or this is a drawing of it. That's right. Right. So there's a debate on that even to this day on how exactly is deduction possible if the, the, the elements, the magnet and the copper disks, disks are, are spinning. How is that possible? And um, now this, te this technology is used today um, in certain applications uh, as a dynamo. Um, but um, it, as far as this experiment being uh, uh, you know, replicated and, and I guess used for the average consumer, it, it's, not, it's not quite mature yet. So, so it's incredibly efficient? It, it's incredibly efficient. It's a high current device. It's a high current device. But for some reason, it was abandoned or it was shelved. And instead, Faraday's other inventions, yes, which were the machines that um, they had drawbacks, including mechanical friction and, and electrical losses. So these are the DC motors you see today that right. have coils wrapped that around we're still everywhere. Still using today. See, the, this machine doesn't Wasteful, have any doesn't right? have any coils. It's just uh, uh, some basic flat metal pieces. But what we have are coils, and um, yeah, those do have losses in how they're built. Okay, that's. All right, so here's an inventor that just about everybody knows about, Thomas Edison, yes, right? He yeah. invented lots of things, and even though he was at a, he was in a war with uh, Tesla, we'll talk about that in a little bit. He's pretty he's pretty well revered yes, he and is, respected yeah. as an inventor. He was also a very savvy businessman, so yes. he did some business things as well. But let's talk about him. He was born in 1847 in Milan, Ohio. And at age 15, Edison became a tramp telegrapher, sending and receiving messages via Morse code. Later, he worked for the Union Army as a telegrapher. In 1884, the inventor built one of the largest laboratories in the world. He also registered 1,093 patents, contributed to x-ray technology, storage batteries, and motion pictures, movies. Yeah, right? yeah. He invented... Wow. Um, Edison batteries, incandescent light bulbs, the phonograph, cement making technology, motion picture cameras, DC motors, and electric power. And here's a quote from Thomas Edison. Genius is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. <laughs> so let's move on to the next inventor okay. for today's course. And that is Nikola Tesla. Nikola Tesla. Which a lot of people have been talking about. But, you know, he wasn't really talked about a lot until recently. Yes. Like the last, what would you say? Maybe. 20 years? 10 years? Maybe 10 years. 10 years, right? It's yeah. kind of like he got popular again or his work got popular again after being... Especially after 2012. After, yeah, 2012 really brought him back into the limelight because <laughs> of some of his, some of his experiments. Um, but anyway, let, let's talk about who he was. So he was born in 1856 in what is now known as Croatia. Yeah. He came to the United States in 1884 and briefly worked with Thomas Edison. In 1887, Tesla had successfully filled uh, in 1887, Tesla had successfully filed several patents for AC-based inventions. Tesla's AC system eventually caught the attention of George Westinghouse. Yes. Yeah. AC current, this form of electricity, can travel over large distances, and you can't do that with DC current, no. and we're going to explain what they are in a minute. Yeah. Uh, one day, uh, oh, actually, I'll let you read the quote. Okay, so okay, this so is a quote from Tesla. These, this is one of Tesla's quotes, and there's lots of them out there. Yeah. But this is the one we, we chose. One day, man will connect his apparatus to the very wheelwork of the universe. And the very forces that motivate the planets in their orbits and cause them to rotate will rotate his own machinery. Nikola Tesla. Yeah. So Tesla's notable inventions are the Tesla coil, the resonant transformer. You are watching a segment from our book called Forbidden Tech. This book has been put out by the Fix the World organization, and we hope that you're enjoying the information. We depend on support from viewers like you and have several products for sale on our websites that we know you're going to love. The program will continue shortly after these messages. 
Hi, I'm James from the Clean Energy Academy, coming to you here from my QEG lab in the United States. Hi, I'm Tavon from the Clean Energy Academy, and I'm coming to you live from our lab in Morocco. The Clean Energy Academy is a member-only community that is the home of the QEG and Mini QEG. This is the only platform of its kind in the controversial industry of energy inventions that allows for safe sharing of ideas in a troll-free environment. The Academy holds a tremendous amount of in-depth technical information reports, schematics, and engineering data based around the co-development of open source alternative energy devices. You can learn more about our QEG project by visiting our website cleanenergyacademy.com or by watching our documentary film Chasing Tesla which also can be found on our website. Twice a month we hold live calls that cover the latest updates on our QEG project work and also include special guest speakers and presentations on related energy topics. Members get invites to our live calls and archives. Non-members can purchase archives of our calls at our online shop. Members also get access to our project reports and our builders forums. These forums include documentation around testing results, experimentation descriptions, and detailed project explanations. We also have a wide selection of members-only video galleries that feature project footage that you won't find anywhere else. We have some additional sign-on bonus features and low-cost monthly membership plans for instant access now available at the link below. Again, click the link below for more information on where you can get archives of our live calls and access to all the benefits of being a member of the Clean Energy Academy. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you join the exciting co-development work the Clean Energy Academy. For circuit radio transmitter, fluorescent light, AC motors, and electric power generation systems. Yeah. Which is what we use to power our whole electric grid today. Yes, that's the right. The AC system. Yeah. We're going to go into the current wars. Yeah. Right. So there's a few slides here on the current war. And the current war was a big public display conflict that happened between Thomas Edison and Nikola Tesla. That's right. And there is a movie out there. Uh, it's called The Secret Life of oh, Nikola, Nikola Tesla. Tesla. Yeah. We've watched it several times. And it probably tells one of the more accurate accounts of history of what went on around the current wars. But there were these big public displays, and they were trying, they were basically duking it out yes. around electricity. But there were some conflicts between them. So they had some personality struggles between the two of them, and they fought a lot for many years. Um, so let's just talk about what those struggles were. So in 1888, Westinghouse purchased his uh, Tesla's patents. Yeah for $60,000 in cash and stock in the Westinghouse Corporation. Yeah. So by doing that, that put Tesla yeah. and Westinghouse together as a team mm -hmm. into direct competition with Thomas Edison, who already had a lot of things going. He That's was right. building all of these different power plants. Right? Absolutely, yeah. Um, so between the two, uh, uh, Thomas Edison and Nikola Tesla, a negative smear campaign ensued that was waged by Edison in an attempt to undermine the interest in AC power. So basically, Edison had the monopoly yes. on the power structures. Yeah. Right? That's right. And it was all run by DC. Yeah. It was run by DC from Edison. It was all run by on DC power. DC power. And then Tesla came mm -hmm. along with his AC current system, and yeah. that was a big threat to Edison. That's right. So because of that, Edison started doing smear campaigns just to discredit Tesla and his AC system as much as he possibly could so he wouldn't lose money. Yeah. It was also like I think um, Edison, Edison was working with J.P. Morgan That's right. as well, and they owned all the copper. There yeah. was like this giant copper industry. The ownership everything, of copper at that time was very important. Everything was, was put together by copper. So the thing is, is that the difference, yeah. and we'll get into that um, in a little bit, because AC – Power does not need all that copper, right? Yeah. To travel really long distances. Yeah. So if the AC system came into play, it would basically invalidate everything that these guys owned, the, all the copper, and yes. they would they would lose a fortune. So there was a big reason for all the smear campaigns. That's right. That's right. So Tesla, for his part, 
would patent several more inventions, including his 19 or his 1891 patent of the Tesla coil. Uh, you can see a lot of hobbyists today <laughs> uh, that have a Tesla coil. The lightning everywhere. Yeah, yeah, the big lightning through the sky, which yeah. is really interesting. We'll talk about that a little bit more as well. And you can see, um, let's see, it laid the foundation for wireless technologies, mm -hmm. which we all use today. Maybe you're even streaming this video over a wireless yes. connection, right? And it's still used in radio technology today. Air core transformers are an example of a Tesla coil. That's right. Tell us a little bit about the Tesla coil and the air core transformers. Okay, so um, basically the Tesla coil is what you see uh, uh, people in science fairs or science projects do. It's the giant tower with the coils around it throwing out lightning and streamers everywhere. <laughs> okay, and some of these light shows are, can be very spectacular. But really, the, the, it's, called, it's a type of air core transformer. and really isn't designed for that, but it can do that uh, to transmit energy that way. Um, but mainly, they're used in radio applications. Right. So we're going to talk about the current wars. Now, there's actually a sequence of events that happened with the current wars. So they, they went on for quite some time. Mm -hmm. uh, in the end... Tesla's invention won, yes. the AC power won, yes. um, but Tesla himself, you know, didn't get the credit and bad things happened to him and yes, that's right. he, en he ended up dying um, mm. many, many years later, but he ended up dying broke and alone and he was like the most underappreciated <laughs> um, inventor and that's, that's what a lot of people say, but let's talk about the current war. Yeah. And the sequence of events. So first, let's talk about what DC power is okay. and what AC power is. Okay. You start with DC power. So in DC power, you have direct current, and it flows. It's electricity that flows in one direction only. Um, the system operates at the same voltage level throughout the entire circuit, but and it's not as efficient for long distance transmission um, because you have to push that current through such um, a long a long length of uh, copper, uh, or we start it starts to build up a larger and larger resistance. So any house or any lights that you want to run on the end of that, it becomes more difficult to 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 light compared to um, let's say the houses or lights in the beginning in, in the front of where the source mm -hmm. the source of the power is. So um, direct current runs through uh, a battery powered devices. Um, I mean, it is used today to, for, for things like solar cells. They create DC current. Um, also, you have LEDs that also, um, they, take, they can take an AC signal and turn it into a DC signal. So. Okay. An AC, or alternating, uh, alternating current, is when an electric charge periodically reverses direction and is transmitted to customers by a transformer that could handle much higher voltages. Alternating current runs through our car motors, radio signals, and appliances. Yes. Which basically means it can travel across very far distances. Yes. And back then, Edison's plan was to have a power plant <laughs> every hundred miles, right? Yeah, that's right. So, so this was so that you'd have a giant power plant just for that area. Yes, that's right. And Nikola Tesla said, "No, you can transmit it across." Because of because miles, think right? of it, if you had a, if you need a power plant every hundred miles, you need you need energy to run those power plants. That's a lot and of power plants. Well, that's a lot of coal. It's a lot of coal. Yeah. So um yeah. Anyway, um so now part of the current war, there's this whole section about he said he said right. <laughs> so this is what Thomas Edison because they they really they they did not like each other right. Yeah. <laughs> this is what Thomas Edison said about Tesla. Okay. Um, Tesla's ideas are splendid, but they are utterly impractical. And this is what Nikola Tesla said about Edison. <laughs> if Edison had a needle to find in a haystack, he would proceed at once until he found the object of his search. I was sorry to witness of such doings, knowing that a little theory and calculation would have saved him 90% of his labor. So we'll talk about the falling out. Edison promised Tesla a generous reward. Mm -hmm. This is when they first 
met and started yes. working together, right? That's right. So Edison promised Tesla a generous reward if he could smooth out his direct current system. And the young engineer, Tesla, took on the assignment and ended up saving Edison more than $100,000, which is millions of dollars by today's standards. And when Tesla asked for his rightful compensation, Edison declined to pay him. I think he said something like, Ed, uh, Tesla, you don't understand us, our American sense of humor or something. Yeah, it's totally taken lines. advantage of. Yeah. He, just, he just blew him off and didn't pay him. Tesla resigned shortly after, and the elder inventor sp spent the rest of his life campaigning to discredit his counterpart. There you go. Yeah. So that was the falling out, and they, but they had a chip on their shoulders for quite some time yeah. <laughs> as a result <laughs> of that. Um, okay. More sequences of the current war. You want to take us away? Yeah. Um, and this is Edison fries an elephant. Um, mm -hmm. Well, you know, Edison really wanted to prove that AC power was dangerous and that um, his direct current was the way to go. So to prove that, uh, he, uh, he staged a highly publicized electrocution of a three-ton elephant known as Topsy. Uh, she died instantly after being shocked with uh, a 6,600 volt AC charge. I mean, they could have electrocuted Topsy with DC current, but... He chose to do it with AC current, and they really had to, from what the story was, they really had to throw the juice on to 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 kill the elephant. It's horrific. Yeah, it's horrible, and we do have a picture of that um, from the newspapers, I believe, back in the day. They did say that Topsy was convicted of murder because Topsy was like a circus elephant, I think, and mm -hmm. she ended up killing some humans. And so they, they convicted her. Public enemy. Of, uh, anyway, so okay. so that happened. And there were there were other animals, too. I think there was, like, dogs and things that... Um, yes, all kinds of animals. They, uh, they were was, electrocuting animals yeah. to try to make people afraid of the AC. And it was all just a big propaganda smear campaign. That's it. So this is a very interesting point. Um, this brings us to the end of the War of Currents sequence of events. Yeah. Which you gotta fast forward all the way forward in time until in 2007, Con Edison, which is the power plant um, named after Thomas Edison, ended their 125 years of direct current electricity service. That's a long time to have direct current, right? When you're not really <laughs> using it, you're using AC, but okay. Um, that began when Thomas Edison opened his power plant station in 1882. It changed to provide only alternating current. And that's a long time it is. <laughs> yes. to waste power, but it's, it's pretty much a sign that the, the current war was officially settled yes. in 2007. <laughs> it's like hundred and something years later, yeah. <laughs> right? Um, anyway, and so, but the other thing too that a lot of people don't know about is mm -hmm. that in, in 1915, both Edison and Tesla were to receive the Nobel Peace Prize for their strides in physics, but ultimately, neither of them won. And the reason why it is rumored is that it was caused by their animosity towards each other and the refusal to share the coveted award. So yes. these guys, they were at it to yeah. the bitter end. <laughs> yeah. But that's a really important part of history. Let's move forward. This is a fascinating photo. We're going to talk just a tiny bit about Edison's spirit phone. Yes. Well, I mean, both inventors were interested in contacting something that was external or from the outside. And in Edison's case, he wanted to contact the, the, uh, the ghost world. You know the spirit, the spirit realm. Yep. And so uh, he, and with his fascination uh, with with communicating with the dead, he built a machine uh, that he intended to communicate with spirits uh, from the other side. And uh, in this picture, which you see, and is, we'll, we'll, we're, yeah, we're gonna blow this picture up actually, <laughs> so you can really see it. 
but this is the actual device, his his spirit phone. Yes, that's it's right. It's now sitting in a museum. So this is a picture of it in the museum. And interestingly enough, <laughs> there's an orb, a white. Uh, you see that orb that's it's being right in the middle of the right the next to the the spirit the spirit the phone. spirit phone. And there's a lot of information that people have been looking into orbs. They show up all over the place in photographs. It's not just a piece of dust. Or a lens flare. Or a lens or a... flare. They, these are actual interesting phenomena that, that do occur. Um, we're not talking about orbs in this course at all, but no. we do want to show you that there is an orb on Edison's spirit phone. So we, <laughs> felt, we found that really fascinating. Yeah. Now, the other thing that's an interesting uh, fact about Tesla that a lot of people... You are watching a segment from our book called Forbidden Tech. This book has been put out by the Fix the World organization, and we hope that you're enjoying the information. We depend on support from viewers like you and have several products for sale on our websites that we know you're going to love. The program will continue shortly after these messages. Cell phone radiation is a real concern, and people are becoming aware of its harmful effects. Hi, I'm Tavon from Fix the World. Let me explain to you how a cell phone works. Data travels on towers that are mounted on the buildings from your provider down to your phone. Now, the problem is that that data, those signals, when they come to your phone, they also go through your body. Studies have shown, and people have complained from illnesses, sleepless nights, uh, mood swings, uh, stress, all coming from the harmful effects of EMF all coming from your cell phone. Now you can sign a petition to get the towers removed in your local community or neighborhood, but what can you do right now to protect yourself? This is our new Oregon Shungite phone shield to help protect you from cell phone radiation. Let me explain how it works. It absorbs and transforms the signals into energy that is more compatible with the body. Here is how Oregon transforms energy. Some people might think that orgone blocks energy, but it's actually a lot more complex than that. You see, what orgone energy does is it takes energy that is harmful and it transforms it into energy that is beneficial. So it cleans it up, kind of like a sewage treatment system can clean up or transform waste. Harmful wireless fields from cell towers, smart meters, smartphones, internet routers, and your television, for example, make the environment around you toxic and harmful to human health and well-being. Orgon energy placed around your environment cleans up the toxicity and helps to restore a healthy, life-supporting environment. This effect can be measured in various ways, such as preserving blood samples for longer periods of time, preserving fruits and vegetables and foods for longer periods of time, better seed germination results in plants, bigger yields in plants, providing pain relief, aiding in better sleep and relaxation, seeing the energy field in frozen water, and much more. Orgone energy devices are made mixing a blend of iron oxide, steel, brass, shungite, and crystal powders into an epoxy resin. When the epoxy cures into a solid plastic state, it puts pressure on the surface area of the powders. This causes something known as the piezoelectric effect, which emits a harmonizing field generated by the different specific properties of the ingredients. It is this field that transforms the harmful energy from EMFs into healthy, life-preserving energy. Our Oregon EMF protection phone shields can be used on your cell phone, on your laptop computer, on your Wi-Fi router box, or anywhere you have a Wi-Fi signal. We are running some special deals so that you can purchase enough shields to protect everyone in your family. We're selling these phone shields in a variety of colors and you can get them either single or in sets of two or sets of five and special offers in the link below. We make and ship our Oregon products all over the world. You can email us at fixtheworldproject at gmail.com and either myself or my wife Naima will get back to you. Thanks for watching. People don't really realize is that he believed he spoke to aliens. Yes. So something actually occurred. 
Um, he was out there doing his thing. Where was he? He was he was at uh, one of his structures at the time. Yes. He was working on one of his many experiments. Yeah, he, he was uh, sending sending um like uh pulse signals through one of his uh, uh transmitters. Yep. So and he and claims he, to have received a signal back. He thinks he got a signal back, right? And mm -hmm. the signal read one, two, two three. three. <laughs> but anyway. This is the letter. He got so excited that he wrote this letter to the Red Cross yeah. in New York City. Interesting. So we'll read the letter that Tesla wrote. Yes, okay. All right. To the American Red Cross, New York City. The retrospect is glorious. The prospect is inspiring. Much might be said of both. But one idea dominates my mind. This, my best, my dearest, is for your noble cause. I have observed electrical actions which have appeared inexplicable. Uh, faint and uncertain though they were, they have given me a deep conviction and foreknowledge that are along all human beings on this globe, as one will turn their eyes to the firmament above with feeling of love and reverence. Thrilled by the glad news, brethren, we have a message from another world, unknown and remote. It reads, one, two, three. It's Christmas 1900, Nikola Tesla. Yeah, very interesting indeed. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to move on to a different person now. Here you go. And... This is James Clerk Maxwell. Yes. And he's very significant and important. He created all these equations. That's right. So James Clerk Maxwell, he lived in 1831 to 1879. And he was a Scottish mathematical physicist. His most prominent achievement was to formulate a set of equations that describe electricity, magnetism, and optics as manifestations of the same phenomenon, namely the electromagnetic field. His discoveries helped usher in the era of modern physics, laying the foundation for such fields as special relativity and quantum mechanics. Yes. So he's like the guy. Amazing. He's the guy, you know, he, um, he, brought, he came up with all these amazing theories that are used in a lot of things today. Yes. But here is a fascinating story, and we're going to walk you through this. Um, nice and slow so that we can really try to make, make sure we bring this point home. Yeah. There are two different kinds of electrical systems, right? Am That's I saying right. that right? Yeah, electrical yeah. systems yes. that we use in machines, Yes. right? And there's two different kinds. And these, these are based on the theories of Maxwell's equations. Yes. So Maxwell right. figured out these equations, and we built all these machines, and we've been living with them the whole time. The two different kinds of systems, they're called asymmetrical and symmetrical. That's right. One of them, everybody knows about, and we use in all of our machines, are that, that system. The other system is hidden. Yes. Right? Because one system is based on one series of Maxwell's equations, right. and the other system is based on another set of Maxwell's equations, and the ones that are hidden mm -hmm. are the ones that are based on Maxwell's equations that are also hidden. They were redacted out of the public knowledge base. So we'll get into the scandal in just a second on what happened, but first let's really make sure that you understand what these systems are. Yes. Okay. Yeah. okay. So, an asymmetrical system is an open system, such as solar panels, wind turbines, and those types of things. And that allows the creation of a series of exchange of energy reaction to our inputs based on electromagnetic resonance or electromagnetic feedback in every spin on a motor or in every pulse of input in a static coil. One of the first asymmetrical motors was Faraday's unipolar motor, later modified by Nikola Tesla, 
Yes. We covered that, right? Yes. And these systems generate their own energy and do not require fossil fuels. That's right. So that is the hidden system. Yes. And notice that the unipolar motor that we talked about earlier is considered part of an open system. Yeah. An it's an open system. That's right. Which means it's receiving energy from the environment. From the environment. It's not creating its own energy. It's not within a closed box. It's not in a closed box, right? So the other kind of system is called the symmetrical system. And I'll let you describe what they are. I'll let you read that. And these are the machines we use all the time right now. They're all symmetrical systems. Yeah, the symmetrical systems uh, are closed systems uh, that cancels the electromagnetic resonance with every spin. Uh, it creates wasted energy in, in a form of excess heat uh, and requires additional energy source to run. You always have to put energy into it, uh, such as fossil fuels. Uh, these are symmetrical obsolete systems that we use every day um, in all of our electrical appliances. Basically, if you're using fossil fuel, um, you're using, that's an example of a closed system. So let's go back to that um, little example mm -hmm. about EMF and back EMF. Okay. Right. right. Because this is where that comes in, mm -hmm. and we learned that the last time around, is mm -hmm. EMF and back EMF. So when you have an action, right. you have a reaction. Right. And if you've got some kind of a loop, right, mm -hmm. where you have action, reaction, action, reaction, action, yes. reaction, that is an open system, right? Yes, it, yes, because it is. you have an action, and then it's bringing in energy from the environment, it's reacting, yes. and it's, it's flowing almost like an infinity symbol, right? That's right. Yeah. It's flowing. Yeah. But if you have a machine that has some kind of built-in mechanism in it, where every time you have an action, instead of a reaction, when the reaction tries to happen, there's like some big cancellation happens like it comes up against a wall yes. and there's no reaction so it's like it's like cutting it off That's it's right. cutting off the energy and cutting it off and cutting it off and cutting it off yes right so that is why when these when these um symmetrical systems are operating yes they are wasteful that's right because rather than being smoothly action reaction and built the right way yes they're cutting off the energy so you have to keep consuming more and more and more gas That's right. or fuel in order to keep it running. Absolutely, yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's just my way of understanding how these systems work. So let's go into a little bit of the uh, political scandal behind this. This is how Maxwell's work and his theories were redacted. So in Maxwell's original work, which was called The Dynamical Theory of Electromagnetic Theory, which was written in 1865, yeah. he had two sets of theories, okay. right? Yeah. Equations, two different sets of equations. And 50% of those were redacted out of his work. Yes. But they waited until one year after he died, and then they redacted it. So this is what happened. Okay, one year after Maxwell's death, in 1879, scientist Hendrik Lorentz, financed by J.P. Morgan and Thomas Edison, mutilated Maxwell's original work yeah. and spent the next two decades deleting all knowledge of asymmetrical systems that would not require the profitable oil industry to operate. They symmetrized all of Maxwell's equations and labeled these incomplete theories yeah. as the laws of physics. There you go. When I discovered this, and this is based on a whole bunch of research, right? We do have a references if you want to go and there's been amazing <laughs> papers written on this, but when I discovered this information, it blew my mind. Yeah. And because I'm I'm constantly coming up against it's against the laws of physics, right? But here's a way to prove that out a little bit more, okay? We're going to talk about the laws of nature. Maxwell's laws of equations, uh, they're truncated, and so they were assumed complete. Assumed to be complete. Yeah. They're missing 50%. They're missing 50%, mm -hmm. but they're passed to the engineering students and physics students as the complete equations to this day. Yep, the, all, the, the be all and end all rules to this day. Yeah. So. Uh, these equations were now meant for systems that you can put a box around them as a closed system. 
which has formed the framework uh, of the fundamental laws of thermodynamics. So when people say free energy is not possible um, because of the laws of thermodynamics, what needs to be specified is if they're talking about a closed system, because right. that's when that's where these thermodynamic laws apply. They do not apply in open systems. And that's the key. That's the key, because free energy is possible if you're working with a different kind of system. But yes. if you don't know that other kinds of systems exist because you weren't taught it, because it was all removed that's right. from the public knowledge base because of financial interests, then you will parrot what your uh, teacher has told you. Yeah, you'll just do what you're told. And you won't, well, I didn't know there was another kind of way of, of building things. That's right. Right? So, but let's let's try to prove that out a little bit more. Yeah. Because we're, we're going to look at the other side. It's like, well, what are those other 50% of the laws that were yeah. removed, yes, right? That's right. Of Maxwell's theories. Those have to do with the laws of nature. Right. And there's some really simple examples in nature that show you the reason why this it can't be done because it's the laws of physics like why that's just bogus mm -hmm. it's a bogus statement and that it can be done because it already happens naturally in nature so um let's see I, we, we wrote here why do we have to waste and consume energy if it's freely available all around us in nature the conventional laws of physics tell us that perpetual motion is not possible Yet, how does the Earth rotate? Yeah. The laws of aerodynamics tell us that a bumblebee should be incapable of flying. Mm -hmm. But how does it fly? Conventional scientists from all over the world will make statements such as... The claim that this is going to run permanently or indefinitely doesn't seem to hold because a second law of thermodynamics tells us that this is not possible. And around the turn of the century, the eminent British scientist Lord Kelvin said, Radio has no future, heavier than air flying machines are impossible, and x-rays are a hoax. <laughs> so much for conventional science, yeah. right? Yeah. So the laws of nature contain concepts that focus on frequency, mm -hmm. resonation, vibration... If you live on this planet, you're affected by technology. We all use energy every day. We all breathe the chemicals in the air and eat them in our food. We are all part of a society that has been using covert operations on its citizens. It's time for us to wake up and understand what has been going on in our world when it comes to hidden technologies. Authors Naima and Tavon have taken everything they've discovered and compiled it all into one book called Forbidden Tech. Among the many topics covered in this book, you'll learn about free energy, patents, political scandals, murders and cover-ups, engineering basics, cars that run on water, surveillance, gang stalking, energy weapons, and viable solutions to protecting yourself against them. We are now running a special offer sale on our book. You can purchase a printed copy on Amazon.com for the special sales price of $35. That's almost 50% off. Forbidden Tech is now available as an ebook on sale for $9.99, instant download to your computer. Also, Forbidden Tech is available as an audiobook, as an instant download to listen to on your PC, your phone, or on the device of your choice. Now on sale for $14.99. Also, check out our Forbidden Tech video course. This commercial-free version of our entire video course is available for instant download for the sales price of $19.99. So click the link below or visit our website to order your copy of Forbidden Tech today. Magnetics and energy. This is another one of my favorites. All right. <laughs> Let's break it down for us. Okay, so this is the best example is the aerodynamic law-breaking flight of the bumblebee. Mm -hmm. And to put that simple, to make, to make it simple, when a bumblebee, if you go according to the laws of aerodynamics, the body of the bumblebee is too big for those little wings to carry it around. It doesn't seem possible. It doesn't, it's like it, it breaks the laws of aerodynamics, right? But here's something really, really interesting. Um, there was a, um, there's, there's a man named Ralph Ring, who mm -hmm. is a, an engineer and a technician, and he worked with Otis T. Carr, who was a direct uh, apprentice of Nikola Tesla, so there was a line of knowledge there. 
he was at a conference and he gave an explanation as to why the bumblebee can fly. And I'm going to read it word for word because it's absolutely fascinating. All right. He says that next to the larynx in the bumblebee's throat, there's a tiny hollow tube that acts as a resonance cavity that accumulates frequency. When the bee starts beating its wings, it does this to accumulate frequency, which bounces back and forth in the resonator cavity until it reaches the same frequency of the earth, known as the Schumann frequency. Once the bee reaches the same frequency as its surroundings, it evens out into what is known as zero point. When anything reaches zero point, you can then change the energy. The B, the B is now free from the gravitational influence around it. It creates its own little magnetic bubble and hovers around. So that is how bumblebees can fly. This is how nature works. There's um there's some lizards mm -hmm. that can do this as well mm -hmm. and hummingbirds. Are, have the same has the same thing. The mm -hmm, hummingbird, mm -hmm. the way when it flaps its wings so fast, and you can tell too because of the way that these these insects and animals actually fly. They don't fly like in a straight line. They hover. Yeah. They hover in such a magical way, and that's because they've created a little magnetic field around themselves. Wow, that's very fascinating. So we are. That was just one example. Of zero point energy, and I'm just I wanted to go a little bit further into depth with zero point energy to define it, and this will mm -hmm. this will finish off this particular module. So zero point energy, why don't you read the definition for us? Zero point energy is also known as the ground state energy. Uh, zero point energy is the lowest possible energy that a quantum uh, mechanical system may have. Uh, it's the energy of the system's ground state. All quantum mechanical systems uh, undergo undergo fluctuations uh, in the ground state, and they have a, a zero point energy uh, as a consequence of like their wave like nature. Uh, the concept of zero point energy was developed by a German, uh, or developed in Germany by Albert Einstein and uh, Otto Stern in 1913. Uh, using a formula developed by Max Planck in 1900. Now I'm not going to even try to pronounce what they called it in German. Um, zero point energy is basically translated from German. Uh, I'll try. Which it's is, no punkst energy. I believe. No punkst energy. Yeah, well, <laughs> very good. <laughs> and or energy. No and, punkst energy. Energy. It's a German word. Anyway. And so the vacuum energy <laughs> is the zero point energy of, of all the fields in space. So that's so that's a very technical, that's a very technical explanation. It is a technical explanation. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you one more. Now Nassim Haramein is into science and physics, mm -hmm. and you know he's got a lot of videos out there. Something else about him is that he was a skier, like a professional downhill mm. skier. Oh okay. And I remember hearing on a, a interview that he did once is he was explaining zero point energy. As a skier, so if if you've skied before, when you're when you're turning, you have to shift your weight on the skis in order to turn from one side to the next mm -hmm. as you're going downhill, right? So that moment when you are putting your weight in one side mm -hmm. to, to to make that turn, that's one energy, and then you go to put your weight on the other side, mm -hmm. and there's the other area yes. of energy. But that moment in the middle. Mm -hmm. Just as you're getting ready to switch your weight over to the other side to make that turn, that moment in the middle is zero point energy. Yeah. And for anybody who skis, that was that was my easiest way to understand it. It's like that that point in the middle. Okay. Um, where you can if you can hit that, yeah. that's where you can you can change energy. You wow. Can, so that was one way of putting it. So anyway, um, so that is it for this module. Yes. Let's uh Talk about our handout. We've we've covered a lot. We've got Faraday and the homopolar generator and Thomas Edison, mm -hmm. Nikola Tesla, the current wars. Yes. Edison's spirit phone. Tesla speaks to aliens. James Kirk, James Kirk Maxwell. <laughs> Asymmetrical and symmetrical systems. Maxwell's theories redacted. Laws of nature. Laws of physics. Flight of the bumblebee. Yeah. 
Yes. A zero good. point energy. So you have the one page handout for this module. Thank you so much for Thank joining us much. this time. And get ready for number three because we three. got a lot more information to keep going through. So see you next time. Take care.